Hey everyone, let's get started with Nux.js. So if you're new to Nux.js, I highly encourage you to use the documentation. So literally in the guides in the new beta, we're gonna just click there and we're gonna scroll down and you can see uh, how to get started. You could start from scratch, which will show you like a really, really basic way of getting started, which kind of like just shows you how to understand how Nux works, you know? Um, but what we're gonna do is actually use the using Crate Nux app. So this is like really great. If you're using Yarn or NPX or NPM, you can easily install them and you can just copy it by clicking the button. So we're basically going to um, create a project very easily. So I'm just gonna show you by sharing my screen. And we're now in Visual Studio Code. And I'm literally just going to paste what we just copied. And I'm gonna remove project name, and we're gonna put in whatever we wanna call it, um, my Nuxt, for example. Sounds good. So what this is doing is it's gonna install Nuxt, but it's gonna ask us a couple of questions um, so that we get everything we want. So it's basically saying, it's generating your Nuxt.js project in a folder called my Nuxt, and do you want the project name to be my Nuxt? Now that will be in your package JSON. So maybe you're fine with that. Maybe you want something different. For me, that's that's cool, I'm just gonna press enter. Now, do I want JavaScript or TypeScript? So if you're TypeScript fan, you can just like, you know, choose TypeScript and start working with TypeScript. I haven't started using TypeScript yet, so I'm just gonna use um, JavaScript. So I just press the enter key. Now, I wanna use a package manager. We recommend Yarn, you can use NPM if you want. So I'm gonna uh, press enter and then I'm gonna have Yarn. Now, do you want a UI framework? This is kind of really cool. And in order to choose this, you literally just press the down key, right? So you can choose Ant Design, Bootstrap View, Viewify, Bulma, Chakra UI, Element, Framework, iView, I don't even know some of these, Tachyons, Tailwind CSS, ViewSack, Viewify.js. And as you can see, I just stopped there on Tailwind CSS because that's my favorite. So I'm gonna actually press enter so that I have Tailwind um, but if you don't want a, a framework, then you can just use none or you can choose whichever one that you want to use. So now I have a choice to add some modules to my application. So do I want the Axios module, which is used for like, you know, making calls um, to an API, for example, and imagine we're gonna do that. Now, here we've got a choice, we've got a multiple choice. So we use the space bar, right? And that's gonna select, you see the little green dots and I've selected Axios. So I'm gonna get Axios installed for me. And if I press the down button, I can choose a progressive web app. So this is really, really cool because you don't have to do any configuration and you're gonna get a progressive web app installed for you, which is brilliant. So that's gonna improve your performance. So I'm gonna choose that as well. And now we've got content. Uh, what does content give me? It gives me the Nux.js content module, which allows me to write markdown and then be able to call the markdown files and it's very good for like writing blog posts or writing documentation or just separating your text from your HTML. So really, really cool. And I'm gonna add that as well because I really like content. So now this is all gonna be installed for me. So that's cool. So I've, once I've selected them, I just press enter. And now I get my linting tools. So this is where I always say beware. Uh, if you don't know much about linting, or if you just like creating something fast, um, maybe you don't want linting. Um, however, if you're working on a production site, maybe you really do want linting because you want everyone to have the same code written the same kind of way, you know, with the same kind of rules and stuff. So I personally really like ESLint, I really like Prettier. So um, I'm gonna choose it, but also um, be careful if you're gonna choose, you might get some issues. Sometimes Prettier and ESLint doesn't work too well together and you might have to like um, change a few of the configs. Uh, lint stage. So this is really good. So it's going to stage your files. Um, it's going to lint the stage file. So that means when it's ready to go to Git, it's going to run that linter and it's going to make sure that it passes all those rules before it can go up there into Git. So style lint, this is for your styles. Um, really, really good if you want to like make sure your styles are written correctly and you can create your own rules as well. And we're going to install that as well. And comet lint as well. So we can like lint our comets. So Again, you don't have to accept all these. And if you do, you just press the space bar and then press enter. Testing framework, do we want testing? Well, in general, yeah, we should all add testing to our application. Uh, you can add Jest, you can add Ava and WebDriver IO. I'm actually not gonna add testing because you know, um, this is just a easy demo. So 
we're not gonna testing but if you wanted to see what it is um so i'm just gonna press enter for none but you could select one just by using the down key now i get to my rendering mode so how do i want my application to be rendered do I, I want a universal application which is going to give me a server-side rendered application or a static side generated application so I personally, that's what I want, but you might want a single page application, which is where it's all done on the client side. Um, I'm going to choose universal. Now, this is interesting. Do I want a Node.js hosting um, or do I want a static Jamstack hosting? So depending on where you want to host your application, if you want to host it on Netlify, for example, then you would use the static or the Jamstack hosting. Um, if you wanted to have a server-side rendered application hosted, uh, on a Node.js hosting provider, then you need server. So in this case, I'm going to choose static. And now I can have some cool development tools. So I have a jsconfig.json file. So this is recommended if you're using VS Code, uh, if you're not using TypeScript. So I'm using that. So I'm going to select that. Semantic pull requests. You might not have people um, adding pull requests to your applications. You might not need that. Um, I'm going to include it just for fun. And dependable, I like this, for auto-updating dependencies, only if you're using GitHub. I mean, of course you're using GitHub. Uh, you might not be. Um, so yeah, dependable, really good. Um, so that's gonna update all my dependencies for me without me having to worry about that. So I'm gonna press enter. And then basically continuous integration. Do I want continuous integration with GitHub Actions? Yes, please. This is gonna set up my continuous integrations with GitHub Actions for me. Uh, very cool. And then what is your GitHub username? So my GitHub username is Debs O'Brien with a dash. You can put yours in, of course. And uh, what is your version control system? Git for sure. And now it's gonna start installing the application. So although there's quite a few questions there and you might think, whoa, that's too much. You can just press the enter button really quickly and it goes really fast and just into, you know, just adds like the default stuff, right? Um, but it's kind of cool because it does give you everything that you need and it saves you having to add these modules. It saves you having to decide, you know, which rendering target and which rendering mode and, and what to add in to get that working. Um, it saves you having to add your CSS framework. It's gonna do all that for you. So this is what's really, really cool. Um, it does take a couple of seconds, but not too long to kind of just um, install all that and get it set up. And once it's, um, done you get this lovely message saying like actually um it's so cool i'm just gonna give it an applause like <laughs> i know cool right so then yeah once you uh have that you literally just to get started um you do cd um which is like entering into the directory right uh my nuxt because that's what we called um our folder so i'm going into that folder and now i just go yarn dev and this is going to uh, run my application in, in dev mode. So you can see here, it's uh, it's trying a random port because I've got loads of ports open. Normally it would be localhost uh, 3000, but I always have like millions of things open at the one time. And um, you might get a few um, errors there. Um, don't worry about those. And it's basically um, building the bundles uh, that I need. And and then it's ready and I can just literally click on, on the link. So if I was to like click on this link and open it, um, now what I have to do here is just change my, my window to share. And now I've got my Nuxt app, right? So this is what it's given me. It's very basic, right? But I've basically got my Nuxt app up and running. So just to kind of yeah, go back and show you what exactly, uh, that's giving me, um, we can actually then just click on the folders and just kind of explore, uh, what's in here, right? So. I can open up that my next folder and I've got in here, I've got my GitHub workflows. Wow. So I've got depend about set up my semantic setup and I've literally got continuous integration um, set up. Like that's kind of cool. I'm just going to like close that terminal for a minute. So I have a bigger screen here. So this is really, really, really cool. It's all set up for me. Um, I've got a folder structure. So I've got um, an assets folder which is gonna have like just a readme in it, but that's where you're gonna put your images. Uh, I've got a components folder. So I've got a logo component in there. So you can see how, how that's um, done. Um, I'm just gonna allow that. 
Uh, VS Code sometimes just tells me, you know, do you want to do this? I'm like, yes, I do want to do this. Um, it's got my content folder. So this is going to have like just some demo content and I can then call that. So I can use fetch to fetch that content and add it into my application. So that's really cool. I've got a default layout set up. So this uh, it uses the Nooks component to add everything that's going to be in my pages. Uh, just a middleware folder. If I needed to add middleware, I would add it here. Node modules is where all my packages go. Uh, pages. So I've got just an index page, a uh, very basic um, page set up there with my template tags, my style tag, and my script tags. Uh, plugins, I have no plugins, but this is where I would add my plugins. I have a static folder. That's where my fab icon goes. And this is where the icon um, is created for my progressive web app. So you can change that to your own icon and then uh, the progressive web app will read that. And my um, sw.js file, that's for the progressive web app. Got my store folder. If I want to activate the store, I just put like an index.js file in there. And then my store is activated. I've got my editor config. If I wanted to choose tabs instead of spaces or whatever uh, you want to prefer. Uh, my linting file is added. You can see I've added Nux.js and Prettier, Prettier View, Prettier Recommended, Prettier Nux Recommended. And I can add in rules there as I wish. I've got Git Ignore. It's already filled out with everything that I want to ignore. If you want to ignore other stuff, you could add that in there. I've got my Prettier RC, so I can just add, you know, those and add more things to Prettier if I wanted, um, single quotes, double quotes, etc. I've got my comment, uh, comment lit set up, so uh, that's already working. And my uh, JS config, um, I don't need to do anything here with this, but if I wanted, if I needed to, it's there. I've got my Nux config. Now this is like my most important file. So in here, I've got a target static because I'm using static hosting. So this is really important if you want to host a Netlify or Versal or um, GitHub pages or any of those hosting services um, that use static hosting, then target static. Um, this is my head tag. So this is where I'd put like, you know, the title of my page. This is great for search engine optimization. So this is a terrible title for um, search engine optimization. So a better title would be good here. And the description, yeah. So you can literally put a description in here in the content. And that was what, that's what Google gonna read, yeah, when someone wants to find your page. And you can see I'm adding the icon here and some other stuff. So that's where everything can go in into your head tag. If I had a CSS file, I would add this in here into my main CSS. Oh, my email is just open, sorry there. Um, and then I've got my plugins. So if I want my plugins, uh, I could just add them here. I've got components set to true. So I'm gonna get uh, auto imported components uh, by default. That's just gonna, you know, I don't have to write import um, navigation from components navigation, for example, just use it in the template, so cool. Uh, build modules. So these are my modules that I've added. Tailwind, as you can see, has been added. It uses the default Tailwind config file. If I want to add a new one, I just create a Tailwind config file at the root level, and then I can modify that. But if I just want to use the basic stuff and just get started, don't need to do anything. Just use Tailwind. Great. Love it. Uh, modules. I've got Axios. I've got PWA, and I've got content added. And then these are only here if I wanted to configure it a little bit further. Um, package JSON just shows you everything that's already included and you can see like your scripts. So dev, uh, yarn dev or npm run dev. And then I've got like, you know, Nux running in dev mode, uh, build if I want to build, start or I want to start, but really I want to generate because I'm building a static site. So um, npm run generate or yarn generate, it's going to generate that um, site for me. Um, then I've got like my readme. Um, my style end, so any rules I want to put in there. So maybe you want someone never to use like, you know, the color is blue and red, but they have actually variables, for example, you could add that in there. And the yarn lock file that just, you know, make sure your packages are kind of like um, the same, um, same version throughout your application if you're sharing or using with someone else. So that's pretty much, um, that's your Nux application up and running. And that like took seconds, right? And Literally, uh, I'm gonna just open the terminal and I'm gonna run yarn generate and, oh, sorry, I'm not in the actual, um, so I'm not in the actual files. So I need to cd my next and then I can run yarn generate and now it's gonna generate. So let me just put that over there a little bit. Do, 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 do. Now we can see what's going on. Let me close 
that. And we have like, it's generating my application, right? So it's, it's running through everything. Um, and it's going to basically create the bundles of everything I need. I only have one page. So it's literally gonna say, it's gonna uh, generating the pages with the full static mode. You can see that down here. And I've generated the home index route. If I had another page, it would generate that. And it's client side fallback, created 200.html and it's, it's done. So my application is now created. And I can actually see that um, by looking in here and I now have a dist folder that wasn't there before. And that dist folder is now going to have that 200 HTML and that index.html, which is my beautiful um, file with everything that is included in it, right? So literally then if you wanted to upload that to Netlify, you would literally just drag it and drop it onto Netlify or, or set it up. Um, by including it through GitHub or whatever. So that's the folder that you need. That's where all the magic is. Every time you add something new, then you just generate again, and then you've got that new dist folder, and then you can upload that again. And that's pretty much it. There you've got a Nuxt application up and running and can be hosted in seconds, and you're ready to go. Um, yeah, it's kind of pretty cool. So literally um, have fun with Nuxt and see you in the next video. Bye.